I have just got back from performing London where it is ridiculously busy and hectic, so coming to Leamington is lovely. Now, you have got some really talented speakers going to come up today and they're going to tell stories with interesting bits, with lines and jokes, and they're going to talk about April Fools that they've done, they're going to talk about things they've overcome from being a fool, I presume. I'm not going to do any of that. If I could ask you to think of any word and I had that word written down on a piece of paper inside this box, that'd be pretty impressive, right? I'm going to ask you to do that in a second, but please don't think of anything that's arty, anything that's from Leamington, anything that I could have influenced with you with since being in this room. And also, not a brand name, so please don't say Apple or Nike, because I can't afford to pay them. <laughs> <laughs> have you got a word? Yes. What is your word? Giraffe. Giraffe? Mm -hmm. Giraffe. If I have giraffe written down on a piece of paper, you'd be impressed, right? <laughs> giraffe, huh? Giraffe. <laughs> G -g -g -g. Ernie? Yeah. <laughs> it's about giraffe. <laughs> Page 379. The R must be the right-hand column. Is there a word in a box on the right-hand column? Yes. What's the first word in the box on the right-hand column? Nothing. Nothing. What's your word? Nothing. <laughs> And then I met a girl in a miniskirt who was a mini girl, and now she's, I've been married to her for 47 years. So definitely the mini was my dad for. But <laughs> he picked this up and said, how can this guy spend all these millions of pounds? And then my counsellor started saying, what the hell are you doing? But in the end, I had to say to them, just look at the date at which that was leaked. Because it was leaked on the 1st of April. And in fact, it was a setup that I put up with the courier. And we put it in. <laughs> and it worked brilliantly. <laughs> so you have to be careful. You can occasionally use the media. And I did. Per bra. So he said, that's fantastic. Okay, but he said, just one question. Can you explain to me what you're doing with these bras? And why are you using them so fast? He said, it's very, very simple. He said, my office is opposite a synagogue. And I am cutting the bras in half and I'm selling them to all the Jewish people for 200 pounds of a skull cap. <laughs> because I tell you, I was in the, in the 60s and the miniskirts and I liked it. So I tend occasionally to be a little bit too friendly towards women, not purposely, but because I want to be nice. And it's annoying me that I have to now be so very careful. I have to be careful. And all I'm trying to be is nice. But the world is making everybody look worse. And that also, in a way, gets me worked up. And the amazing thing is, is that that young lady is here tonight. She's come down from Newcastle to be here to tell us the story. Ladies and gentlemen, Faye Kronkowski. So he rested the cigarette in an ashtray and slowly peeled back the curtain, which revealed a man there who was bent over in pain and sweating from every orifice. And he had huge hideous boils all over his back, which were like ready to burst. So she introduced herself, exchanged pleasantries and walked over to a little shelf where there was like some scalpels and bandages and things like that. So she took a scalpel and a little, a little cup thing and began slicing away. Now the man was squealing in pain by this point and Boil juice was running into the cup. And, uh, oh, sorry, I couldn't think of a better word. And when, she was, uh, when she'd finished slicing them all, she took the same very whiskey from her pocket, poured it over the man's back and rubbed it into the wounds. Situation. And suddenly, through the doors, in ran two nurses covered in blood from head to toe. And they said, Dr Longstaff, Dr Longstaff, we need you quickly in the emergency room. So she got her things together and ran after them. Now she arrived, she arrived in like the intensive care unit of the time where somebody was performing open heart surgery, open heart surgery in 1664. There was blood all over the ceiling and the little boy's still beating heart was placed in a tray at the side of the room. So she threw the doctor out of the way who was a shaken mess. He was just covered up to uh, covered. And she took, <laughs> she took a needle and thread from the side and began to stitch them back together, placing the heart back in there. She stitched and she stitched and she stitched. Idiot, she thought. How is it that I'm stood here doing this? So just as she did the final stitch and got the little boy's chest back together, <gasps> he sat up in bed. It was an April Fool's miracle. Like she'd saved this little boy's life. And in 1962, there was a gentleman who was walking along a beach in Holland. And on the beach in front of him, he saw something 
phenomenal, amazing. There is no way this thing should have been on this beach. He couldn't believe his eyes. He starts spreading the word. And before long, national, so the local TV, the local papers, they all start finding out about this. And then experts get involved. A week later, live on TV, this gentleman admitted that he had, in fact, had made it himself. And all these experts with all these tides and all this stuff, they were completely wrong. Now, you'd think that is the end of the story, but in actual fact, there's a little bit that kind of was the reason I decided to share this particular story with you, because at the ending, there's one little extra fact that sort of touched me in, in a way. I'm not going to cry like Ernie, don't worry. It's not, it's not going to happen, trust me, it's not going to happen. This gentleman, this artist, what he did after this, he, every year from 1963 until he unfortunately passed away in 1996, he would make a little bronze Easter Island head and he would find out all these sort of um, April Fool's pranks that had happened in, in around Holland. He'd decide which was, the, in his opinion, the best one and he would present the perpetrator with one of these little bronze heads. And I think that's a nice little thing to do, you know, above and beyond sort of just doing one of these pranks yourself. Mm -hmm.